Okay, before we even do introductions, I am just going to tell you right out of the gate the craziest fact that I learned about Suru while researching for this video, okay? Uh, and you know, I found out a couple of things about Suru that I was honestly surprised about. Like, oh, I didn't even know that about her character. Something uh, regarding her title actually is a big deal, and we'll get into that. But before all of that, you want to know the craziest thing I learned about Suru? You're not going to be ready for it, okay? You ready for this? Okay, I just want you to paint a mental image in your mind when I say this fact, okay? Suru, the, the old lady, the 76-year-old lady in the Marines, yeah, she is 6 foot 8. She is 6 foot 8 inches tall. She is over 2 meters tall. She is, like, the height of, like, a professional basketball player. I don't, I don't know why I felt like that was such a big deal. It's just because I always pictured Suru as like, you know, she's pretty cool because she has a devil fruit that's very devastating. But because she's an older woman, I always pictured her as like a hunched over like, oh, hello there, dearies, have some cookies. You know, I didn't picture her as like six foot eight. I was like, oh, Suru's on the court now. <laughs> she's going crazy with it, right? I understand. Heights in One Piece are ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, they're all huge, you know, much taller than any human could achieve um and even like humans in the one piece world can be like you know eight nine ten feet tall or something ridiculous like that but still i don't know why i just was not ready for six foot eight suru all right i, I looked it up the average height of basketball players professional basketball players in the nba in the 2021 2022 season was six six so she's taller than the average pro basketball player. I just I just love that. Okay. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Techie and Barry here. Today, we're going to be talking about the great staff officer. I, I don't know what that title entails. Maybe she owns a lot of staffs. She's like Gondolf or something, you know? But also known as the brilliant tactician and the user of the wash wash fruit that can wring pirates out to dry and rinse away all of their evil deeds. Vice Admiral Suru of the Marines. Yes. Okay, so when I was in London, uh, a fan of mine came up to uh, the, well, it was Rustage's table because we had all the One Piece D&D &D merch. But uh, I met a fan at one point, uh, and he is uh, a fan that has been commenting on my videos for a while. He was the last assassin, and he's like, hey, Teching, I keep commenting you to do that Suru video. You got to do the Suru video. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it is finally time for me to do the Suru video because I have done videos on Sengoku and Garp. I've done, obviously, way more on Garp because he's a much more prominent character character, but I've done a few on Sengoku, and it always has been weird. I was like, you know what? You're right, you know, because the trio, Sengoku, Garp, and Suru, all join the Marines at around the same time. Like, here's an image of them in Film Z that we see of their rookie years in the Marines all, all joining together. They were, you know, bright young Marines ready to take on the world back then, right? And now, cut to 50 plus years later, and they are all legends in their own way. Garp is probably the single most famous renowned marine that has the most achievements that that is still living in the entire world i would probably argue that okay he's garp the hero he's garp the fist sure he never reached uh, admiral status but that was by his own choice garp could have been admiral if he wanted to garp could have been fleet admiral if he really wanted to but he chose not to i think all of the achievements and everything he's racked up over the years probably the single most well-known marine in the entire world of One Piece, okay? Then you have Sengoku, and of course he was an admiral, but after that he got promoted to fleet admiral, and uh, now he's just chilling. He's just a general inspector. He just kind of hangs out in like, uh, you know, uh, swim trunks and just walks around eating snacks. You know, he used to be the fleet admiral, so he can't exactly just retire to a nice resort community in the South Blue. I don't think the government will really let him do that. Um, so he has to still stick around HQ, but he gets to he gets to relax, okay? He gets to put his feet up and just chill out every now and then, right? He also has the power of the mythical Hito Hito no Mi Daibutsu, allowing him to turn into a giant golden Buddha statue and create shockwaves and everything like that. So really, uh, really powerful character, very knowledgeable character because he knows a bunch about the will of d and everything like that but then finally last but certainly absolutely not least we have suru the great staff officer and that was the first thing i kind of approached here okay her title the great staff officer 
This is the other thing I learned about her. It didn't surprise me quite as much as her dunking abilities, but uh, Suru was Sengoku's, like, advisor. She was essentially the second-in-command behind Sengoku. Now, you might be a little, like, curious about that. Like, what do you mean she was second-in-command? Her rank is Vice Admiral. You know, she wasn't even an Admiral. Clearly, the Admirals would be second-in-command. Well... Her title, which is in Japanese, Dai Sanbo. Sanbo a lot of times means, you know, uh, advisor, okay? And if you think about it logically, being the fleet admiral of the Marines, you gotta have somebody there to help you run the day-to-day -day activities and be a good tactician and everything like that, right? Just like is Sabo is the staff, uh, the, the chief of staff of the Revolutionary Army. The wording is a little different, but the same basic idea is there. So Sabo is the second in command right under Dragon, right? Just like how Bogard is like second in command under Garp. Yeah, Sengoku's second in command in terms of the person that he would like advise in like meetings and stuff like that was and always had been Suru. Which makes perfect sense, because, like, Sengoku gets, Sengoku gets promoted to uh, Fleet Admiral from Admiral status. He's like, hey, Kong decided to, uh, well, I don't know if Kong decided to resign or if he was, uh, you know, directly pushed into the position of Commander-in-Chief. It was probably the latter. The Garo say, I don't know, for whatever reason, we're like, okay, maybe, maybe something happened to the former Commander-in-Chief. We don't know. But, like, Kong, you're the new Commander-in-Chief. Sengoku, you're the new Fleet Admiral. And Sengoku got to select somebody to be, like, his Chief of State. Staff, okay, and then that was Suru. Now, what about the other admirals? What about Kizuru and Aokiji and Akainu at the point? Well, they kind of are doing their own thing because they're leading their own ships and their own fleets and everything like that. And while they're certainly not like slouches when it comes to like tactics, they can't always be around Sengoku to advise him. You don't really get the feel that like Kizuru, Aokiji, and Akainu were always hanging around Sengoku like, Sir, we need to do this. And, Sir, I've run the numbers. We have to send this many battleships. That wasn't their job. That was Suru's job, okay? And since Sengoku, Garp, and Suru all join the Marines together, and okay, it's like, all right, Sengoku's the fleet admiral. I need to pick a second in command that's going to be my advisor, my staff officer, that's going to know how to run the damn, you know, the Marines and know what, what, they're, what the hell they're doing, right? He's going to pick Suru. Like, it makes sense. Garp is, Gar Garp is out there, you know, punching pirates, and he's like, ha, 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 ha. I can do whatever I want. I got the utmost freedom. I'll never be an admiral. I'll do what I want when I want. Meanwhile, Sengoku is like, all right, so it's definitely not going to be him. Suru, do you want the job? And Suru, of course, is like, yes. And whenever you see, like, she was present at the, uh, the, the Warlord meeting, the first Warlord meeting we ever had in the story right after Crocodile was defeated when we first get introduced to Kuma and Flamingo. Uh, we see her there and she's just kind of like silently observing the meeting. Yeah, that was her job the entire time. Now, it's okay if it flew over your head. It flew over mine too, just simply because like she doesn't really appear all that much. Um, but yeah, her position was pretty adamant. Kind of the same deal also with like, yeah, Garp might have been a vice admiral, but he wasn't treated like every other vice admiral. People were not looking at Garp and Suru like, oh, you guys have been in the Marines for 50 years and you're only vice admirals. <laughs> no, they commanded an immense amount of respect, okay? In fact, I would not be surprised if Suru was also asked to be promoted to Admiral at some point and kind of along the same lines as Garp, she was like, no, I'm good. I'm okay with just staying as a Vice Admiral. Maybe for the same reasons that Garp didn't want to get promoted, like, hey, if I'm an Admiral, I have to answer directly to Tenry Bito. I'm right under their thumb. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just stay a Vice Admiral and go my own way. Suru might have had the same deal than Sengoku asked her to be the, you know, staff officer, and she's like, sure, yeah, of course, right, okay. And uh, it's interesting, because in the last chapter, we also saw Sengoku and Suru listening to the message of Vegapunk, and they're still together, like, hanging out. They're on their ships, heading to some location. I assume maybe Hachinosu, because the last time we saw them before that, they were discussing Garp going there to try to save Kobe, and then they freaked out, and so they were probably heading to Hachinosu as well. Uh, so I I'm kind of interested in seeing where that's going. But uh, they were listening to Vegapunk's message, and Sengoku was, like, chomping down on the right crackers like this isn't good this isn't good Suru oh man he's gonna spill the beans all of the beans are gonna be spilled this isn't gonna be good pinto beans uh red kidney beans they're gonna be everywhere and then he's just munching down on the crackers and then you know Suru's in the background like 
easy. Easy does it. You don't want to choke. <laughs> you know, calm down. Uh, sir, as your, as your staff advisor, I will advise you to please stop eating a lot. You know, you don't want to choke on those crackers, right? Okay. So a couple of background information about Suru beyond that. Okay, she's from the North Blue, which makes sense because she is essentially the arch nemesis of Doflamingo. We'll get back to that in a moment. Six foot eight, has the power of the wash wash fruit. Not going to go too much into her devil fruit ability because I already did a whole video about that. I called it the weirdest devil fruit. Something that even with the devil fruits we've found out about since then, I still consider Surus to be the weirdest because it embodies the aspect of laundry. Okay, every devil fruit has like a theme or something they're based on. And, you know, before this, we didn't really know why devil fruits existed the way they did. Uh, now Vegapunk has kind of clarified it a little bit. We still don't know the whole story, but the idea that human desire gives rise to these very unique devil fruit abilities. So her power is not the ability to manipulate water. It's not the ability to manipulate soap. That's a separate power altogether. That's the Awa Awa no mean that Khalifa has. It's not the ability to like you know wind power to like you know like like drying out something or like a dehydration ability like that would be like the suna suna no me or like smoothies ringing out devil fruit oh no 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 it's nothing of that it's very specifically the power of laundry I go more into that in the Weirdest Devil Fruit video, but she hangs pirates out to dry, and when they are affected by her power, a little bit of their hearts, their evil hearts, get cleaned out as well. So, a lot of pirates in the world, anybody that has dastardly deeds in their soul, kind of, like, really is af afraid of Suru's ability, because that can literally change the person they are on, like, a fundamental level, right? She's cleaning them down to the atomic level, right? So, that's, that's some basic stuff about her, but... Uh, growing up and being raised in the North Blue, uh, probably she encountered Doflamingo relatively early in her career. Uh, by the time the whole incident with Law occurs on uh, Swallow Island and then Corazon dies and the Op Op fruit and everything like that, remember the whole reason that Doflamingo had to skedaddle out of there was because Suru found out where they were and she was heading toward the island. And Doflamingo like drops everything. He's like, oh shit, we gotta go. Suru's coming, all right? So... I want to learn more about these two's, like, backstory and everything like that. It, it's brilliant, the way that it's, it, like, the very brief amount of times that we've seen them interact. And really, it's only the one time when Doflamingo was on the ship uh, being taken to Impel Down and you had Suru, like, watching his cell with some marine guards. Dude, that is one of my favorite scenes involving Doflamingo and Suru, for that matter, because... In just a small little scene, you get the feel of how these two kind of view each other. Doflamingo is pretty categorically evil, and he talks down, he shit talks Law and Luffy and like everybody he views as beneath him. He shit talks Fujitora. It's just like, ha <laughs> ha, Fujitora, that man's an idiot, Suru, right? And he's having this conversation with Suru, but the, based off the way the conversation goes, this is like someone that he deems as his equal, okay? It's like the two of them are at like a constant game of chess, all right? Where Suru and uh, Doflamingo are like matching wits with one another. And he always viewed her as like, this is my equal. This is my nemesis. There's even a line of dialogue there where Doflamingo's trying to do his like bullshit that he normally tries to do, like the stuff spewing from his mouth. Um... You know, he's just like, ah, Fujitora, I'll tell you what, Suru, that guy's an idiot. If he would have joined with me, then we would have defeated them all. <laughs> Things would have turned out differently, do you understand? And Suru's just there not having any of Do bullshit and just like, you're an idiot, quit it, you lost, Get deal with it, quit whining and grow up. And Doflamingo just... Oh, I can never win one over on you, Suru. Oh, how can I best you? You know, so it's that it's that attitude between both of them where it's like his kind of manipulation tactics and the way he tries to run the conversation, that shit don't work on Suru. This, they, like, she just looks right at him and it's like, nope, you lost. You lost because you failed, and that's all there is to it. You know, you're sitting there whining and complaining in your sea prism cuffs about, oh, if only the Marines would have helped me, I would have been okay. Well, too bad, Mr. Sunshine. We didn't help you this time, so deal with it. You're going to level six of Impel Down, and we're going to damn make sure you get there. All right, even Jack attacking the ship. You know, Sengoku and Suru were there, so... 
There, there was an image of uh, when Bartolomeo was talking about them. This was the image he assumed of like, this is what Sengoku and Suru appear in the minds of pirates. All right. They look like straight up demons. Okay. Which, yeah, it, it, fair, fair. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, not much we know about that, uh, but they certainly have been at odds for years. And I'm sure Suru has bested Doflamingo on a few occasions. Doflamingo has bested Suru on a few occasions. But I think overall, the scoreboard, I think Suru has more victories on uh, Doflamingo than he does on her. Okay, maybe a couple of times she, she was able to get outwitted by Doflamingo, but ultimately, she's the one that was, like, claiming victorious there, right? Okay. Now, something uh, we found out recently is that Suru has a granddaughter, and her name is Kujaku, which just means peacock. Because in the Marines, most of the women are named after birds. That's just a naming gimmick that Oda does a lot. Uh, like, for example, uh, Isuka, who is a member of the... Uh, he, she was an ensign that shows up in Ace's Light Novel. She has the name of a bird. And uh, Tashigi is the name of a bird, right? And so in the case with uh, Kujaku, Peacock, and in the case with Suru, it means crane. And then, uh, of course, there's also Osuru in Wano, who is Kinemon's wife who, you know, in Wano, they add the O's to a lot of female names. So, like, for example, Tama's name is just Tama, but they add O in front of it, so most of the time people say O Tama or O Toko or O Suru. So I've mixed up their names quite a bit over the years, especially ever since Osuru showed up, right? So, you know what? I actually kind of appreciate that, too, from Oda, because people have brought up, it's like, what, wait, so these two characters in this manga have the exact same name? Yeah, and you know what's crazy? That happens, right? It adds a little bit more of a sense of realism, even though I don't really find it all that confusing, because they're very different characters. But, like, you know, you're going to run into people in your world that have the same name, right? Maybe you shouldn't have a character that has the same name as your protagonist or something. We run into somebody else named Luffy, or we run into somebody else named Zoro. That would be a little weird. Um, the the only other manga I know where that happens is Vinland Saga, where there are two Thorfins, uh, but uh, one of them has like a nickname, uh, Bug Eyes, that he goes by. Uh, because in, you know, Viking culture, there was a lot of like similar names like Thorfinn, Thorgil, Thor, or Thor, just running around, you know, that's just how it goes, right? So yeah, two names, uh, same, same name, but different characters. Um, now, what about Suru's daughter, though? Okay, because every time we see Suru's ship, it's always like a bunch of women that are like the high ranking officers. In fact, I think her ships are filled with just nothing but women uh, in the Marines. So uh, that's pretty badass that she has that fleet of women that were just like besting Doflamingo like everywhere they went. All right. But I have a theory. Uh, I have a theory that this woman right here. We see her in the background during uh, Laws and Cortisone's backstory. She was there. And we also see her around in the present storyline. She seems to always be... She seems at the very least to be Suru's, like, right-hand uh, woman, I guess. You know, like, just like how Bogard is uh, the second-in-command under Garp. This woman seems to be the second-in-command under Suru. And her name, uh, we actually just recently found out, actually, is uh, Hototo Gisu, which means uh, she's a, it's a cuckoo bird, okay? Uh, there might be another way to pronounce that, but it's a cuckoo bird, okay? So... We found out her name because she was actually the Marine that uh, was, like, chastising Garp when Garp was teaching that lesson to Kobe and Helmeppo in the, um, in the uh, like, the classroom of the Marine HQ. Like, you know, if there's an old man and a baby and you can only save one of them, who do you save? And then Kobe was like, oh, well, I would give up my seat on the ship to the old man and the baby. And then Garp was like, oh, you're wrong. You leave the old man to die in the elements and you save the baby and yourself because you are the future. And then Hototo Gisu comes out and just like, no, Garp, you can't be teaching that crap. Stop it. He didn't mean that. <laughs> all right. All lives, you know, equal. You save both of them. You figure out some way to save all three of you. I don't know what the answer to the riddle is, right? Now, the reason I feel that Hototo Gisu is Suru's daughter, follow me on this, okay? So Kujaku has blonde hair. We know that officially because Oda actually drew her. Uh, she hasn't showed up properly in the anime yet, but uh, she shows up in the Tonko Bon cover, so she's blonde, okay? Hototo Gisu, also clearly blonde, all right? Now, if you look, and obviously Suru's hair has grayed with age, but if you look at her past, you could see she had black hair or, like, bluish hair, like dark blue. Or did she? 
because this scene right here shows up in uh, film Z. So it's not like it's canon that they did join together, but they might have gotten the hair color wrong. And do I have any proof of that? No, not really, except there is a sketch that Oda did make of Suru when she was younger, but it was that big cover page with all the Marines, which means it wasn't, uh, it was like in a sepia tone kind of thing. So even though you can't really tell, in this same cover spread, when Oda, Oda's the one that actually drew this one, Garp's hair in his younger years was black. Same with Sengoku's. But he made a point to not ink in Suru's hair. So I think Suru, in her younger years, is meant to be blonde, not having the black hair that she has in, the, uh, the fi in film Z, in the flashback scene that we see there. I think that was a mistake. So I think Suru used to be blonde, and Hototo Gisu is her daughter, who is like her second in command right now. And then we have Kujaku, who is the daughter of Hototo Gisu and granddaughter of Suru, making it uh, not just like she has a, a battleship full of like marine women, but also it's like the family line that continues. Also, I find this funny because look at Garp's family tree. <laughs> look at look at Garp constantly trying to like, I have a son. He's going to be a strong Marine. And then Suru's like, yeah, I have a daughter. She's going to be a Marine too. Right. Well, my son's going to be a stronger Marine. Oh, no, he left and joined the revolutionaries. What the hell? Actually, didn't join the revolutionaries. He left and started a revolutionary army. Oh, man. Meanwhile, Suru's over there like, well, my daughter's doing great in the Marines. Shut up, Suru. Flash forward a few years. Hey, Suru. Okay, things didn't work out with my son being a Marine, but get this. I have a grandson now, Luffy, and he's gonna be a Marine. I'm training him upright. Suru's like, oh, that's lovely. Well, maybe he could train with my granddaughter, Kujaku. She's also gonna be a Marine. Ha ha ha. Well, you better watch out, because I'm sure he's gonna be strong just like me. Oh, come on, he went to go be a pirate? Damn it! <laughs> Meanwhile, Siru's like, well, my daughter and granddaughter are doing great in the Marines. My granddaughter just got promoted to rear admiral. Shut up! I don't want to hear it, Siru! Well, uh, Luffy's a Yonko now. That beats rear admiral any day of the week. Poor Garp. <laughs> Poor Garp. He just wants his family. He just wants the family line to continue. You know, meanwhile, Suru's over there living the dream. You know, actually, what would be great about this is I don't know how Garp raised Dragon, but we can make inferences. We definitely know how Garp raised Luffy, okay? Garp was like chucking Luffy in the jungle and tying him to balloons into the stratosphere. You gotta train him up strong, right? And uh, maybe being a little bit too pushy about the whole Marine thing, right? And Luffy even said to him multiple times, like, Grandpa, I don't want to be a Marine. Ah, too bad you're going to be. You know, what if Suru was way more nurturing with her daughter and granddaughter and actually allowed them to choose, right? And she just gave them more freedom. And then, you know, if Hototo Gisu is in fact Suru's daughter, she decided to grow up and just join the Marines and ended up on uh, her mother's uh, fleet. And then eventually she had a daughter and then Kujaku grew up and was given the same like, hey, you can be a Marine if you want to. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's not a big deal. And she's like, no, I'm going to join the Marines. I'm going to be part of the family line. And so you have three generations, a grandma, daughter and granddaughter in the Marines. Isn't that cool? That actually is pretty damn cool, right? So uh, Garp is just every time he looks at Suru's family tree, he's just, just he's just like, I could have had something. Oh, man. Well, whatever. OK. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think that was mainly everything I wanted to bring up about her, uh, aside from just closing it out with the idea that she is, on top of being a pretty strong Marine, I mean, like, to get the accolades that she did from Doflamingo, you know she's, when it comes to, like, the offensive, she's good at that shit. But also, she's known as a great tactician. In fact, probably the greatest tactician in the Marines, honestly. Once again... Admirals rank higher than her. Fleet Admiral ranks higher than her. Commander-in-Chief, clearly. But in order to, like, and I'm reading a lot of Kingdom right now. I'm up to Chapter 200. They just started the um, Invasion of Wei in Kingdom. So I'm getting back up to the place where I left off the last time. So I got another 500 chapters to go, but I'm, I'm into Kingdom right now. And something you learn a lot about in Kingdom is, yeah, warfare is not just about charging in. Now, obviously, in One Piece, Oda does not go into as much detail 
Riverdale as Hara does in Kingdom, uh, very clearly. In Kingdom, you will have the battle maps, and like, okay, this army's over here, here's their right flank, here's their left flank, here's the high shin unit, here's all these, like, sold 20,000 over here, 30,000 over here, here's the base camp, here's the, the topography, you know, like, Hara goes into it, because that's what Kingdom is. Kingdom is, like, an historical warfare manga, so, you know, Oda doesn't go into that detail when he's doing, like, naval warfare in One Piece. However, even though Oda doesn't go into it like that, that kind of stuff still does happen in the story, right? They don't just charge in and just attack the pirates. You know, we don't see it because that's not the point. But there's got to be tacticians in the Marines. There's got to be strategists in the Marines. There's got to be people. We saw a little bit of this during Marine Ford, like a little bit of it, where Sengoku had the strategy to lure everybody in and then raise the encircling walls. So there, there are tactics and strategy. It's just that Oda doesn't go overboard with it because that's not that type of manga, right? Oda's not going to do like an entire chapter of like, okay, here's all the different positions and laid out like a map and just like, we're not going to do that in the story, right? Right? But Suru is one of the people that is like the head tactician, and she's the one that's like, okay, we're going to capture the pirates this way. We're not just going to charge right in. Also, probably taking advantage of, I would imagine, a lot of pirates in the world of One Piece, they don't have brilliant tacticians and stuff like that. I mean, even the Straw Hats... I mean, Luffy's plan 99% of the time is let's go and just charge in, right? And then Nami's like, no, let's not, but okay, we're doing it, whatever, right? Um, but no, if you're going up against a pirate fleet and you got a certain number of marine ships, uh, you gotta, you gotta lay it out properly and things like that, right? And that's Osuru's job, and she's damn good at it, considering, you know, she is the foremost greatest strategist and great staff officer of the marines, right? But anyway, yeah, that's just one to leave you with that. Thank you to Last Assassin and all the fans that I met at the convention. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we have finished the trilogy of Marine Vice Admirals that were best friends. <laughs> there we go. Now we will cover every other Vice Admiral. We will, I still need to do that video on Momonga. Momonga needs a video dedicated simply to himself. Uh, Stainless, Dalmatian, LaCroix, Ronce. Uh, cancer, not to be confused with smoker, although they do both smoke. A uh, lot of light of ice admirals to discuss. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Be teching, signing out. Go to that end screen.